morning and a most blessed Thursday to you. I love it when uh, different things pop up and uh, whether it's something that you're reading or um, you hear it on the radio or it comes up in conversation with a family or friend, uh, it, it's fun when things sort of work together um, and, and you can draw lines of connection through various, uh, various things that come up. So this has happened recently. I have been reading about Solomon and when he was building the temple for the Lord. And, um, and then I also uh, noticed that Rally Day, it, was, it, it had this feeling of, um, of almost like everyone was under the same roof. All of our family was together. And it was so joyful and so comforting to see everyone and to study with everyone and to hear such a beautiful sermon preached. And it was just so wonderful to be together. And then just a couple days later, I, um, I came across another beautiful piece of scripture in Revelation. So I'm going to back up a little bit and then we're going to make these connecting points. So, uh, so reading about Solomon in, um, in Chronicles and building the, the temple for the Lord's name to dwell in and reading about the opulence of the materials and how beautiful this temple was and, and the cypress woods and the gold and all of this beautiful um, materials and that any of the, um, wouldn't have been concrete, but the stone that was used uh, in the building, none of it was carved or chipped or um, formed in the temple. It was brought into the temple after being shaped and developed outside of it. So so the temple was never disturbed and the beauty of the temple, even in the building process, was never disturbed. And after it is built, he is, Solomon is giving this uh, prayer of dedication and, and he says, O oh Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth, keeping covenant in steadfast love with your servants who walk before you with all their heart. And it, it makes us think of the covenant, the fullness of the covenant that God has made with us, um, that he will forgive our sins. He does forgive our sins through Jesus Christ. And as we heard in the sermon this past Sunday, that um, not only are our sins forgiven, but we are invited to take upon ourselves um, the, the yoke of Christ, that we are we are invited to give our burden to Christ and in him uh, we have our rest and in him we learn, in him we grow and um, and have that rest. And, and Solomon asks the question, but will God indeed reside with mortals on earth? Even heaven and highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built. So then, so I'm thinking, okay, so we've got this temple. Um, we've got this question posed that will, will God even reside with mortals or how could he reside with mortals? Then we have this amazing um, sermon that we hear of the heart of God, the gentleness and the humbleness of God's heart and that we are called and invited into, into that, into experiencing and learning from and growing in his heart and, um, and how good it felt to be together as, as a family of faith together and in the presence of God, in the presence of one another. And then I came upon um, this reading in Revelation where it's in the 21st chapter and it says, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see, the ho home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God and they will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. 
And the promise that we have, the promise of not God and the question of can God dwell amongst mortals, but the promise that we will dwell with him eternally and that in his presence there will be joy, there will be no death, there will be no sorrow, that we will be in perfect communion with him and with one another. And I think about the joy that was um, on Sunday morning, on rally day and being together and the joy of these Wednesday family nights, the Wednesday night lives and, and Faith Alive youth on Sunday nights and the joy that there is in being together and growing together and that that is that's nothing compared with the eternal joy of being in the full presence of God's glory and the full presence of one another without our sinful nature attached. Those will have been released for all eternity by our death here on earth, forgiven and removed for us for all eternity by Christ. And to reflect on, on residing with God forever um, and residing with one another forever. It is, it brings so much joy and hope to, um, to our lives, knowing that that promise is real and that promise is for us. And, um, and I just wanted to share that with you. I love, I love how different things, different uh, lines of thought or reading um, or hearing connect and, and bring up new and exciting, wonderful hope that we have in the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are so good and so gracious to, uh, to have the promise of eternal life in your presence and with your glory um, that promise assured to us. And we thank you so much that you have made it clear and that you continue to make it clear to us through the word that is preached, through the communion that we receive, the tangible word and body of forgiveness in you. Lord, we ask that, that you would keep our eyes forward looking toward the day when we will be with you eternally in your presence with one another. And we ask that while we are on this earth, that we would seek to bring that joy and that word of joy to everyone and every encounter that we have. Lord, bless us the rest of this week and bring us together again on Sunday to worship and glorify your holy name. We lift all of this to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I do so look forward to worshiping once again with you this Sunday. Until then, God bless.